gorgeous. Sorry, she did. Oh, we got a visitor. He's our Scotty Cameron rep. So we might have a few people come in and go. I love it. That's This is a be. Brennan, our Scotty Cameron rep. So Hi. in charge of all the buses. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so I wanted to take a tour of the truck and then just ask you a couple questions along the way. Yeah, go for it. But go first, it. wait. First, we got to brag on you a bit because you are an Olympic medalist <laughs> for field <trails>. hockey. <laughs> yeah, it seems a long time ago. Uh, yeah. It was, I'm well retired now by about 12 years. So, uh, okay, so what year was uh, it? So I attended uh, 2008 Beijing Olympics and London 2012 Olympics for field hockey. So Fantastic. Uh, Seems a long time ago now, a whole, whole lifetime ago. So I grew up in the Northeast where field hockey is definitely yeah. like there, like with lacrosse, all of that. But I couldn't tell you if someone told me to go out there and play field hockey, I would have <laughs> no idea how to do it. Everyone says we're a bit crazy. But yeah. I, I don't know. I look at it, other sports a bit, a bit harder. I think, um, again, I wouldn't have had to have a go at lacrosse. So uh, I'm, yeah. I'm from England, so I grew up playing for England and Great Britain. So uh, field hockey's pretty big in Europe. It's grown over here. Like a, I know certainly the college field hockey is pretty big over here now. A few of the girls come over to college and, and play here. So it's, it's only growing in the US field uh-huh. hockey, but I think the yeah, lacrosse is probably still a little bit bigger. Yeah. So how was that transition? Like what, how did that happen from playing field hockey yeah, at what, that level to now working for Titleist in the golf? So I, I played all sports. I loved all sports. Yeah. Um, I certainly, I played golf when I was young as well. Um, so it was more a case of I just probably got to a higher level and better level with uh, the hockey, the field hockey side of it. And then always wanted to come back to golf career wise or after, after I retired and stopped running around the pitch yeah. uh, to, to come back to the golf world. So um, yeah, I always kept my eye in and, you know, trained and qualified as a PGA pro and worked my way up for working at a club and uh, get into custom fitting that way, I guess. Yeah. And do you enjoy, I mean, you obviously probably enjoy it and like what part of being out here on the truck does it, yeah, so the part that I really strived or wanted to get involved in was working with elite players. So I sort of a field hockey worked with, obviously being an elite athlete myself then, but wanting to try and help these girls to become the best athletes they can. And how can we do that is, you know, helping with the equipment, whether it's, you know, making them better for that week or better for the season. We, we provide a service that hopefully makes them a better athlete and uh, working with the, the elite end of the game, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Chloe, give us a day in the life of... And maybe probably more of a macro level first, too, of like, I mean, is there multiple trucks? How does it go from LPG event to different different events each week? It seems like, tell me, it's how pretty, does this all work? Pretty big logistic planning yeah. for the year. We have free trucks for Titleist. Okay. So, um, we, have, we call them Van 23 because it's made in 23, Van 20, Van 13. So, oh, okay. January 1 will be base west coast one will be east coast and then one will sort of roam central mm-hmm. and they'll rotate around they'll be able to cater for each tour so uh van 13 generally we use for the lpj tour but this week it's in houston for the pj tour mm-hmm. uh, and likewise this one sometimes does corn ferry sometimes does elite amateur events so we rotate around the the trucks depending on the location of the event so that's one way how we cover cover the whole country yeah um, and also logistics of trying to drive them to each event obviously these the guys that drive them are on the road for a few hours and it's uh tough to get to sometimes with the weather and the navigating the roads but um yeah that's that's generally how we get the trucks around to each event um in terms of my week and daily life it's uh i sort of we're on the truck will arrive probably saturday or sunday that they'll set up the rest of us will sort of fly in sunday or ready to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So we generally on site for the practice days and program days at tournaments. So mm-hmm. when the girls are grinding, when they need to check in equipment, a lot of them will be Monday will be loft and lie checks and regrips or just making sure the equipment hasn't been damaged in travel. Mm-hmm. And you think they're a lot of them all, if they've made the cut, they'll be playing through till Sunday. So they've got to travel either Sunday night or Monday. So that can be a little bit quiet on a Monday, but generally the girls that perhaps missed the cut will be on site or girls that have traveled in if it's not a long trip. Yeah. Just want to check the equipment to make sure it's not been damaged in transit. Uh, and then anyone that's perhaps had difficulties, you know, the previous week or want us to have a look at something, that's what our Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday's for. And then generally we'll fly out Wednesday night back home or on to the next event. So I'll, I'll generally go back to the uh, Carlsbad way to our fitting center, TPI, Titleist Performance Institute. And I might have players visit me there on a Thursday or Friday if they're not in the, that week's tournament yeah. or uh, they're on a different tour. Or they just happen to be having a rest week or week off. Or um, So, yeah, I might be doing fittings or seeing players um, or doing ordering, getting ready for the following week and the next event. So, the cyclists, yeah, generally on site sort of Sunday to Wednesday and then getting pre- prepped and ordering ready for the next week, really. And are you just U.S.-based or do you go overseas too? Mainly U.S.-based. Yeah. I'll do the European events. Um, this is my background's from Europe, so it's nice to get back home to see yeah. some friends and family. But I also think we can offer, you know, service 
try and offer a service globally. So I'll link up with the European team. We'll have our tour truck on site at the going to do the Olympics this year, the Scottish ladies and the British ladies. So we'll be over there for sort of three, four weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't been over to Asia yet to support for the ladies, but I think we're trying to look to go perhaps later in the year. But again, we've got such a good team over in Asia. We've got a career, uh, career team's really good, strong because the KLPJ and the Japan LPJ tours are really strong mm-hmm. and dominant at the moment that we have great teams on site that they can cater and service and do my job over there basically and uh, can speak the language as well, which yeah, helps. That's fantastic. All right, let's start a tour. So, oh, yeah. I mean, just right here where we're standing, looks like <laughs> a little beverage nice station, yeah. a little snack time. Yeah. So this, Always in favor this of from, little snack. <laughs> this front bit of the truck, we generally like, you know, it's nice for players to be able to hang out and yeah. so anyway, it's hot and humid, come in here, get out, you know, get the air con on and, and just have a breather and take it, get away from perhaps the the range life or exactly. away from the crowds or whatever it may be just to chill and relax it's nice for us to sometimes catch up with players and have a discussion about how their game's going in terms of how they played last week is there anything we can help them with mm-hmm. stats that they might take and uh, what's trending well at the moment and then you kind of have discussions that sometimes it's quite nice to just be able to have a little quiet time and chat to someone exactly. that might need a bit of help away from the, hus- the, the hustle of the range and in yeah. front of people's eyes so mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's nice to be able to players to hang out here it's also good for us to be able to do some ordering and get get up to date with uh, what we need to do in terms of ordering clubs for players and yeah there's also a refreshment area so players can come on and grab a drink grab something to eat which is nice so that's pretty chilled <laughs> yeah um, again underneath there's a lot of storage you'll see covered so again we'll we'll have all sort of soft goods accessories golf balls um, socks waterproofs anything you think of umbrellas is all sort of in these drawers so um, okay so all the title is swag is Titleist uh, Titleist yeah, Emperor Joy yeah, yeah. so uh we're also double brand, but uh, it's yeah, it's anything that someone wants. So again, when this draw will have spikes, if someone wants a re-spike, if someone wants a pair of socks or new laces, oh my gosh. we've got all sorts. I know we've got umbrellas, we've got all golf balls. So anyone that kind of wants or urgently needs something, they can come yeah. and grab it. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. quite on and off people coming and going all the time. Yeah, driving off clubs, that's when you're going to test lie loft or maybe even make some adjustments. Exactly. She might just want the loft and lies checked again, like I said, to make sure they've not moved in transit, yeah. to make sure they're at where they're meant to be at. She, she sometimes will give us, in, you know, the player will give us uh, some info that oh this the 54 degree wedge has been going a little bit shorter than I'm expecting just mm-hmm. can we just check the loft yeah. um, so sometimes I'll give you an indication as perhaps what's wrong with it or it's not quite right or oh it's going a little bit left on me a little bit right on me um, so yeah we can make alterations off that which I say she might just want to check to make sure they're at what they were built yeah. to now I would imagine there's probably some players that are very equipment centric like they're interested in it they maybe tinker more than others and then there's some players Certainly. that just kind of go with the flow more you know like just like equipments yeah. that they don't make it a huge deal like is it does it you get the players full, different full spectrum so yeah you like you bang on there you get some players that are really detailed and know everything about the club they're like i know it needs to be this this and this and they'll they'll know the loft lies length swing weight they'll know everything about that club and some of them even really take an interest in building some of them like to build at home i know patty t likes to uh to really? tinker her clubs and put a bit of lead tape on them. <laughs> um, but Lydia's, yeah, Lydia Co likes to know her specs bang, well, she knows them bang on and likes to check them regularly. Danielle Kang, again, the another one is really detailed in the building side of it and knows, knows her specs really well. And again, regularly likes to make sure they're on point because again, it's their tools, it's their equipment that they need to make their, you know, their career and livelihood. So they need to make sure they've got the right tools and doing the, the correct job for them. So, um, and then there is other players that go, I just build me a club that I need and is yeah. it doing the job? Is it right? You know, is it doing what it needs to do? I don't need to know anything about it. There are players, some players like that. I mean, we're getting more and more down the route of the detail side of it and more players are taking an interest in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is certainly still a few out there that, you know, don't really care as long yeah. as it does its job. <laughs> well, and are there caddies and managers that kind of take on that role for them too? Like they're the ones that are mostly interested in making sure everything's working correctly. Is there certainly that, caddies? Yeah. yeah. Again, cause it get, it's, they can take the blame if it's not right or yeah. you know if, if the club's not hitting the number and they've said this you need to hit a shot 150 and the club comes up 145 or mm-hmm. doesn't hit the mark it comes back to the blame of them almost yeah. and they want to so they need to make sure that equipment's correct and they're they're carrying it around so they want to make sure it's doing the best job it can for as well for them Absolutely. so yeah the caddies do take a, a lot of interest in it and managers less so on this tour but uh yeah certainly caddies yeah all right. So yeah. how about this room right here? So, yeah, so this is our Vokey workshop. Yeah. So we have a little Vokey room out the back here. So um, it can get quite noisy in here, which is why we have the sort of sliding door to block the noise out. Certainly they do a lot of grinding. So we have the 
the set bounces and souls for the Reiki Wizard, but again, some players will want a custom grind. Um, again, certainly different uh, course conditions, turf conditions. They might want a little bit more relief on the heel. They might want a little bit more off the sole and the bounce. Um, so, yeah, so this is where it gets noisy in here. Um, we've got loft and lie machine again in the drawers. We've got all the shafts and heads. So if I show you, yeah. show you on these, yeah. so the latest S and ten heads. So again, we'll have oh sort of God. every bounce and grind. We'll have tall chrome and raw finish. <laughs> so we'll have the raw one, which is the one that rusts up. Yeah. Was then we have the tall chrome, which is sort of the shiny one as well. So again, we've got every loft and bounce you can think of and grind so it plays yeah. in there. I would think this room would be the most busiest because wedges are probably what get adjusted and changed out the most, right? Uh, definitely, yeah. So again, we talk about the groove degradation, which is like the wear and tear on a, mm -hmm. uh, on a wedge. Um, these girls are practicing and playing every day. You know, they wear out wedges quicker than the, yeah. the, the, the cl uh, club players. As they should. Yeah, yeah. And as they should. It's, you know, their tools. And uh, certainly we speak about trying to replace their lob wedge and their bunker, cl bunker club, if that's a 54, 56. Try and replace those more frequent than you perhaps would a, a gap wedge or a pitching wedge because, again, you're using it more and it's it needs more uh, grab from the grooves. So um, certainly this room is really busy. It's probably the one we, we use the most. And uh we're asking the players to refresh their, their grooves more frequent than their set of irons. So yeah. That sort of makes sense. Absolutely. So coming to Arizona and the climate here and the yeah. way the courses play here, what kind of changes are you seeing them come in with or what are they concerned with or what kind of adjustments weather-wise? Yeah, and again, sometimes you don't know until you get to the course. Yeah. Um, sometimes it doesn't play how you expect. Like last week in Palos Verdes in LA, the players were expected to be pretty soft, the greens. It's notoriously always quite soft. It's early yeah. in the year. It's had a little bit of rain, but actually the, they were saying it was playing pretty firm, the greens. They've come here and I think it's probably softer than people expecting being a desert sort of uh, environment. But as I say, it's meant to get, we try and keep an eye on the weather as well. So it's meant to get a little warmer as the week goes on. So mm -hmm. I think the greens will dry out. It's pretty breezy as well. So I think the greens could get firm and fast. Yeah. So far the crest today, we've had quite a lot of people ask for a little bit less bounce, um, a little bit more versatility in the sole. So I've seen quite a few tee grinds be made up today, certainly for testing. I think, again, we're trying to get educate the girls a bit more of trying to carry a high bounce option and a low bounce option so that they can switch it in week in, week out, depending on where they are. So as I said, they might, might go to course and expect one thing, but actually get something else. So we we generally trying to get them to carry a high high bounce and low bounce. If in case we're not there, or in case they test out the course and actually it's not right for them. So um certainly seeing probably a little bit less bounce this week, but I think the greens will dry out and be a bit firmer as we go on. Yeah. So this is the the, the main workshop area. We try and keep players behind this barrier just as a health and safety yeah. point, but um, also not to get in the way. And we've generally, as you've seen here, we have a lot of people coming and going. Yeah. Um, as we lay it out at the moment, we've sort of got irons and this side we've got metals at the back and then uh, our Scotty Cameron sort of area here as well so again players will come on we've got caps in this area but then this area we've got Scotty Camerons so again you'll see again we're looking at Scotty Cameron loft and lie for putters here again we'll be sort of doing re-grips anything sort of re-grips for putters re-weighting might be that checking so some people will change loft for the types of green we want as well so again last week with the Parana I saw so people were trying to add a little bit loft because it was sort of bumpy and mm -hmm. bouncy on the green. So again, that's interesting. We might be putting it back this week, sort of taking the loft off that we added last week because the greens are a little slicker and faster. So there's, again, week to week, like you spoke about the wedges, it happens with the putters as well for course conditions. Again, re-grips re and loft and eye checks are quite popular on the putters. They're pretty Some of the models can be a little bit soft as they move in transit or as we said, we've changed for course conditions. So again, we just want to keep check on them. And again, that sort of, face angle and the, the degrees they come off at. We want to keep that consistent. So, yeah. So the players are traveling in. They're coming in Sunday night, Noisy Monday, <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> All right. And they're kind of seeing what the course is like. They're also seeing where their game is at. They're grinding yeah. out on the range. And then they're, they're just trying to see how they can adjust their equipment to make the best game possible for that, that week. Exactly. And that's, that's why we're out here week to week. I think in the past, we've perhaps not been out here as frequent. We mm -hmm. certainly, the last few years, we've grown our support for the LPJ tour yeah. from, from a brand. And as Titleist, we're looking at having a tour truck at 16 to 17 events this year. I think there's only about three or four in the US that we're missing with the tour truck. And it's purely logistics we can't get to or mm -hmm. parking on site. Um, last year, we were sort of 12 to 13 events. And then year before, we were sort of six events. So we're slowly, gradually growing to hopefully sort of have the full tr uh, tour truck full time on the LPJ tour. And I think that's the support, the level that we're at and we sort of need is 
like you say, week to week, every course is different. They're traveling East Coast, West Coast. They're traveling quite a lot back and forth in different course conditions. Um, and we want these girls to play well with the best equipment and the best product possible to them. So, yeah, I think week to week, if we can be out here as, more, as much as possible, then it's going to help them. Yeah. And you, you're building some irons right now. And yes. we're actually going to go through building a driver too. But what is the situation where they're getting all, they're, they're building and they're going to use all brand new irons? I, like, what is that situation? <laughs> it's quite rare on tournaments. Yeah. Yeah, some players, we did it last week. We had a, a girl who put in a whole brand new set of irons. Wow. A different brand yeah. for ours. Um, sometimes it's purely if the grooves are worn again, similar to the wedges, but we generally will try and ship those home and they'll gradually build work them into the bag. They won't just go fresh set at the tournament site unless they really desperately need it. Exactly. Um, sometimes it's a lost bag and travel. Hopefully oh. it's not that too much. But, yeah. Uh, sometimes I they go... I feel like that happened to Danielle. Hey, it was... Recently. Doesn't, doesn't uh, it happen at Salt Island? Yeah. yeah. There was, uh, again, it's more when they go cross Atlantic back yeah. and forth and longer, longer mm-hmm. flights I guess um, it seems like London Heathrow just swallows up golf bags not the, the greatest of airports <laughs> I don't want to personal experience there, yes but uh, yeah it's, it's one of those ones I think um, certain situations perhaps if it's damaged uh, if it's lost set we'll just build one or two irons but um this one for this this instance is actually to test some iron. So again, we've just built a five, seven, and nine just to test. Yeah. Um, so we've built kind of a half set. If she likes it and tests well, then we'll build the rest of the set. But um, more cases than not, we wouldn't build necessarily a whole set on site. We generally ship build them in our office or uh, workshop in Carlsbad and then ship them out to their home address. Yeah. So they can practice either in the off season or when they're they're not at the tournament site. Exactly. So yeah, our full sets of irons are quite rare. Yeah. <laughs> And how about grips, especially before the, the majors? Are they coming in to get brand new grips, fresh grips a lot? Um, again, every player is really different on this. Yeah. Some, some players I really have to, to push to change. She yeah. probably won't mind me saying this. Alexa Pano is one of our players who won't ever change grips. And I look at them and I'm like, come on, we need a re-grip here. So I think I looked at them last week and said, look, truck's out next week. We're getting a re-grip. Oh, my God. So some players are really like, I don't want to change. They get yeah. comfortable. They like the feel of it. And they like it actually worn in a little. And then others uh, want a fresh grip pretty frequent. Just, uh, yeah, like every sort of six weeks, I guess. And, uh, yeah, it's personal preference on grips. A little bit of comfort and style and feel of whether you want cord or not cord. Or, if you again, there's also the, the thickness and there's the weight factor as well. So mm-hmm. there's quite a few elements to the grip that it's not just how it looks. <laughs> yeah. But, um yeah, the texture and weight is quite a, quite a key one. Yeah. Show us around. So, all right. Um, so, the, yeah, so, so we've got Scotty Cameron area sort of here. Next one, we'll go into shafts. So, again, these will be metal shafts. So, we've got lots of manufacturers for shafts. Uh, we try and stock, again, this is where it becomes slightly different, difficult for us is we try and stock for PJ Tour, Corn Ferry, and LPJ Tour. Oh, yeah, that's so a good have point. Extra stiffs, you have stiffs, you have regs for some of the ladies. And also, you go from like, really heavy like at 90 80 grams down to sort of 40 grams so again it's the kind of trying to carry as much as possible but covering sort of the heavy weights and the stronger flexes and the lighter mm-hmm. weights and flexes really because the goal is to be able to build anything that's on the title list yeah that's a bit you cool. almost need to be covered for every any eventuality that happens if a player mm-hmm. comes in and we need to, have to cover it so yeah every manufacturer exactly. weight and flexes is the hard uh-huh. bit to cover yeah um so yeah, that's so all the shafts. Yeah, there. then you'll go into grips. So we've got Scotty Cameron, a few Scotty Cameron grips at the top here, generally the stock ones. And then we'll move into sort of, like you said, a variety of grips is a lot. So we've sort of got your, your multi compounds, you've got your corded, you've got your normal tall velvets. Mm-hmm. And again, we have different sizes, different weights on those. So you've got round, you've got ribbed, you've got 50 and 60s. So, got so are these really ones. popular? Is that why that's all um, half empty? Is there something <laughs> that. No? People use These probably aren't popular out here. They're probably more popular on the PGA Tour. Yeah. Again, they're quite rough, quite firm. And you've got the rib down the back. So, hmm. um, most popular, probably most popular is tall velvet. The, the gold yeah. tall velvet is probably popular. Uh, and, um, some of the colors as well. So, you get some of the multi con hands and colors are pretty popular out here. Have you worked predominantly with just the LPGA Tour or have you been in the truck for the PGA Tour too? I, I haven't done PGA Tour. I worked six years DP World Tour. So okay. I worked the Men's European Tour for yeah. six years for Titleist. So yeah, I only came over here last March. So I've been here a year now yeah. on the LPGA Tour. Um, I was working uh, ball shoe glove side more for the DP World mm-hmm. Tour and I got to see what the men obviously need and fit, fitted in that tour. 
And then they said, yeah, would I like to come over and sort of do the club side for the LPJ tour? Yeah. I've sort of done it for a year now. But uh, Well, that reminds me, though, about balls. So balls are completely separate, <laughs> really, right? Kind of. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess so. But this, again, this, we do ball fittings. We offer that for, for the mm-hmm. pros. I did a ball fitting last week at yeah. Powers Verdes. So, yeah, it's a really key part of the equipment. It's the only bit of equipment you use for every shot. Mm-hmm. So, it's really, really key and really important for that. Yeah. All right. Sorry. And there's such a variety as well. So again, it's that fit in that category of we look at feel, flight, and spin. You know, do you like a firmer feel, a softer feel? Do you want a higher flight, lower flight? And then you need more spin or less spin. So they're sort of the really basic categories that we look at. But there's such a variety again on the golf ball side. But you don't see players frequently changing what ball they play, even if it's a different climate, different. I don't out here. I think yeah. a little bit on DP World Tour again. Yeah. If they're going somewhere that's high altitude, or like you say, if it's really humid and, and less humid. But the altitude one was a big one. So that, remember the guys used to go to Crans, Montana, in Switzerland. It's high altitude. So again, some of them would switch for that, uh, or in Johannesburg and South Africa. So they had such a global travel that they would switch more. The yeah, ladies, I don't see that quite so much. The climate's pretty similar in most places. Yeah. Yeah. All right. On was it? Um, I don't really need to look at this back. Yeah. But, uh, this is quite cool. Digital loft and lie. So uh, this is where you're testing all the loft So loft and, and lie machine, yeah. So digital one, which is really cool. So we have the same loft and lie machine on all our tour trucks globally. Um, we also have the same in our, our workshop off- offices in uh, Carlsbad. The idea is obviously very super accurate with the cameras being loft and lie. It doesn't, it's not affected necessarily too much by how someone lines a club up. So where you have a manual kind of Mitchell loft and lie, where it's very depending on how someone places it in there. If they place yeah. it in there straight, this has got cameras in it that can, you know, read it without it being super straight to a certain degree. It has to be in there reasonably well. But um, the other thing is this links to a tour app that we have as well. So if I change a loft and lie here, I can change it on my phone. And so if that player then goes plays in Asia and the Korean tour track wants to look what their lofts and lies are, they can see as well. So yeah. it's super cool globally for our tour department to be able to change loft and lies and, keep everyone up to date because they do travel so much and they necessarily don't see this tour truck all the time. They might see different personnel from Titleist. So it's super cool to be able to, to kind of update their loft and lies and then they yeah. get that service wherever they travel in the world. They yeah. still get the same service. They can service. depend on you to yeah. save all that data. Yeah, yeah that's it's nice. really good. We got metal heads in here. Is it shafts as well? More shafts. I'm trying to find metal heads for you. Oh, so driver heads. Yeah, so... Oh my goodness. That's it. Done shafts, so we've got fairway heads. Uh, again, every model, you think of TSR 1, 2, um, then into hybrids as well. And then we're looking at the drivers as well, so TSR 4 in that lineup as well. Um, and again, they have a variety of lofts as well, so um, we're all CT machined and all checked for lofts as well. So again, if a player needs a replacement or wants to test something else, we can, we can cope, cope with it. Well, that is fantastic. Yeah. Well, we're gonna you're gonna show us how you guys build a driver from yeah, weird to say the ground up, but <laughs> yeah. the shaft up. And uh, but overall, thank you for letting us come on the truck and see kind of inside. It's like you guys are wizards back here. You're, that's <laughs> this is where you're making it all happen. Make it all happen. I bet it's a blast. Yeah, I I like the aspect because you you sort of work as a team as well. Yeah. So. We, a lot of the time when this horse trucks out, we'll have a, a Roku rep, a Scotty Cameron rep, um, a, a club technician, so someone on the range. We'll have a club builder as well. So we've got a full team that work together and all sort of moving parts that have to link together. Now I have to fit someone on the range. I have to put the, we put the orders in, but then built by someone else and then again tested by the player. So it's, it's sort of a full, full team effort. And I like the aspect of uh, coming back again for my field hockey days of working yeah. together as a team and being part of that camaraderie yeah. as a team really I see that um, and all trying to make them better players well thank you Chloe right. thank you thank you all right we're here at the Titleist truck I have Emily Pedersen here joining us I wanted to get the player perspective so let's get into it everything I think yeah. I mean I think they help uh, always checking up that you know when we travel so much and the clubs are in the travel bags and on the flights and they're not always handled great mm-hmm. so it's always good to check at least every couple of weeks mm-hmm. if all the specs are what they should be. Yeah. Like all the loft and lies stay the same. And then the putters as well, that the loft is, is right. And then Brennan and I have been working a bit with a couple of different putters the last two weeks to mm-hmm. try and figure out what do I like on certain amount, uh, slow greens, bumpy greens, or faster greens, um, changing the grips, making sure my head covers don't get too dirty. Yeah. <laughs> like, Everything really. So why don't you go through, like, so you arrive today, Monday, like what does your schedule look like Monday through Wednesday gearing up for the tournament? Um, so I would say Monday is probably the day that I spend 
a little bit more time grinding. I will spend a little bit more time on the range, uh, like a longer range session. I'll make sure that all the equipment is what it should be. If I want to do any changes, I want to do it Monday so I can play with what I want to play with on Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. And then pick it, what putter and kind of go with that as mm-hmm. well. And then play nine holes often and then just get around everything, get a feel for the short game, get a feel for the greens and then kind of make a plan as to, okay, what is important this week? Yeah. And so have, have you been out to the course yet? Have yeah. You- yeah. I played nine holes. Yeah. So how... How do you think you're going to make, what adjustments do you think you're going to make this week? If any, I know you said you're going in between putters. Did you make that decision yet? Or, uh, I think, I think I'm going to go with the, yeah, last week. I had one without a line. I think I'm going to go back to my old one with a line mm-hmm. just because the greens are rolling a little bit more true this mm-hmm. week. And I feel like I can be a bit more aggressive with the greens where last week I'd have to kind of everything had to be dead pace and it was more about seeing the big break. So mm-hmm. I thought that not having a line and only a dot was good for me then. I think this week the greens are a lot bigger, so there's going to be a lot more lag putting. Um, so I think that's one thing I'm going to practice a bit more than normal this mm-hmm. week. What are some things that you've come to the Titleist truck and like, are, is, was there any major adjustments made in the past that you can think of, or is it really just testing lie and loft or have you ever taken a wedge out, put a different degree in or, you know, uh, we've changed the bounces a little bit when we're in Europe because of the how firm it sometimes is or mm-hmm. how soft it is. Um, but no, I don't really make any major changes. I don't yeah. think on the truck we do that when I'm at TPI or I'm with Paul in the studio. Mm-hmm. I think that's where the big changes are. And then the tour truck helps me just stay on track yeah. um, throughout the season. Now you're talking to Chloe earlier about your grip. Mm-hmm. We shared that with oh, what, yeah. you, what your concern was and what might be out there that might help. Uh, yeah, because I've been thinking I have super small hands uh-huh. and um, I have the smallest grip there is in the grip that I play. But I was wondering if we could do anything to make it even smaller. Um, and then she's going to check if they can stretch it out or if they can do an even smaller grip or whatever. So they'll help me with these things. So mostly we'll talk about it on the weeks where they're here and then... I'll test it out when I go home. So you, yeah. they usually send me some product to home. I can test and then we tweak it when I get back out. But um, yeah, it's something I've been thinking about for a while because sometimes I feel like I can't really hold on to the grip properly. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's something my coach and I was wondering if we could maybe test. Yeah. And how about new equipment? So this year the new Vokies came out. Mm-hmm. How do you incorporate that into your bag? And does it sometimes take a little longer than just... Switching them out because, you know, I'm sure there's some clubs that you just love and changing it up. I know. To I'm, new versions. I've actually never had a major. I've always switched pretty much as the new things come out. Mm-hmm. I've not had anything really that's taken me a while. The Vokey wedges are basically put in straight away. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also because the way they fly, the ball flight's a little bit lower mm-hmm. um, and it's easier to control the height and spin. So. That was what I was looking for. So it was an easy switch for me with the SM10s. The new ones feel so good to me. Yeah, they do. They, they do. feel They're great. Just like there's, I mean, here's the thing. You hit the center of the club head probably 99.9% of the time, but I don't. So that vibration <laughs> is just a little less <laughs> jarring for us hack, golf hacks out there. Anyways, what kind of ball do you play? Carrots. I play the V123. V123. Yeah, because it spins a little bit less than the... X does, um, mm-hmm. and I feel like that gives me a little bit better control around the greens, and it gives me a better height with the driver. And you made that switch too, pretty quick. Yeah, with the new ball. Yeah, yeah. So going into Seville this week, what is your plan? What are you excited about? What do you think? You said you had to maybe do a little more practice on the lag putting. Yeah, cause which it- was interesting that mm-hmm. you said, okay, so bigger greens, more lag putting. That makes sense. What else? Uh, I wasn't hitting it great uh, mm-hmm. the last few weeks, so I'm going to do a little bit more work on the swing, on the range, to see if I can get some better feels and in that way hit it better. I think that's been my main yeah. issue the last week and the week before. And when you say feel, is it just about finding some sort of swing thought, something that you're feeling that could carry you through the 18? Yeah, I think uh, I've had a few too many. Sometimes when you come off an off week, I try and work on so much and it can be hard to 
narrow down what is it really Mm -hmm. um, and then figure out what is my miss and try and play with that a little bit more than trying to fix everything so you have two misses Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah just trying to find a field that feels good and I feel like is consistent for me on the golf course when Thursday comes. How important is equipment? It's everything. I think it's hard to go out there and play and be confident if you feel like you can't trust what you have in your hands. Yeah. I, I mean, if you don't trust that, if I put on a good swing, it's going to react the way I want it to. If you don't have that feel, I don't know how you, I don't know how you play. Yeah. And that I feel like is the big disconnect between people that play golf for a living and do it a lot compared to just the recreational golfer. And they, they just don't realize how much that equipment affects. No, it's, it's a confidence. And I think it's a trust thing as well yeah. that, you know, it works for you. And you like, there's so many variables in golf already and uh, your swing changes when you fly, when you play a lot and you just don't want the equipment to be a variable. You just want it to be right. And it is most of the front here. <laughs> Okay, I'll finish up with this. I learned this at Vision 54. Mm -hmm. Two good things about last week and one thing you need to work on. I putted good. Yeah. And my short game was good. And I need to work on my long game. All right, fantastic. Hey, good luck this week. Thank you. Thanks for talking with us today. Mm -hmm.